7.4, we're going to be determining chemical formulas. We're going to use the percent composition that we learned in 7.3 to then determine what the formulas will be depending on the amount of each element present. So an empirical formula is when you have a chemical formula, but the subscripts are written in the smallest whole number ratio. So you can see here we have H2O2, and then that's reduced instead of two to two, the smallest ratio would be reduced to one to one. So this would be our empirical formula. Here we have sugar, C6H12O6. To actually have a sugar molecule, you have to have six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. But the smallest ratio of those would be one to two to one. So we will use our percent composition to calculate our empirical formula. So you will be given a percentage of each element. So this is saying we have 78.1% boron, 21.9% hydrogen in this formula, um, in this compound. So we need to figure out, well, what's the formula? So the first thing we have to do is we're going to assume these percentages are grams. So basically we're working, we're pretending we're working with 100 grams of something. So if we had 100 grams, 78.1% would be 78.1 grams. So anytime you see percents, change it to grams. Then once we have those grams, we have to change those grams to moles. So we're gonna be doing conversions. So we're gonna multiply one mole over the mass and the mass of boron is 10.81. So if we do 78.1 divided by 10.81, that gives me 7.2223 moles. And then hydrogen, one mole over the mass of hydrogen is one gram. So that's gonna keep it 21.9 moles of oxygen. Now we're going to take those mole amounts that we have and we're going to divide each of them by the smallest number you have there. So our smallest number is the 7.23 and what we're trying to do is get the ratio that will be used as our subscripts. So divided by 7.23 divided by 7.23 so that's going to be 1, and then 21.9 divided by 7.23 gives me 3. So then these numbers, they almost always are going to be whole numbers. That's why carrying out your decimal places is going to be very important. So stick with two decimal places, and you should be at whole numbers when you get to this point. These numbers are now going to be the subscripts for our formula. So that means we're going to have one boron and three hydrogens. So we'll take those numbers and then we'll write our formula. So boron, we said was one and hydrogen three. And so that would be our answer. So here's the steps. You can see we've got the mass in percentages. We're going to pretend that's grams. Then we're going to get those grams to moles. And then, wow, the moles divide by the smallest to get your ratio. In this sample, we have 32.38% sodium, 22.65% sulfur, and 44.99% oxygen. So we're going to start out by just listing what we have. So we have sodium, which is 32.38%, but I'm going to go ahead and write that as grams. We've got sulfur, which is 22.65 grams, and then oxygen, which is 44.99 grams. Now the first step is getting all of these changed to moles. So one mole over 
and sodium is 22.99. Sulfur, as we look that up, the periodic table tells us 32.06 grams. And oxygen is 16 grams. So we'll go ahead and calculate. So I've got 32.38 divided by 22.99. That tells me 1.41 moles. 22.65 divided by 32.06 gives me 0.71 moles. And then 44.99 divided by 16 gives me 2.8 moles. Now I'm going to look at my three answers, whichever one's the smallest, everything will get divided by that. So 0.71 is the smallest. So divided by 0.71, divided by 0.71, divided by 0.71. So that one's going to be 1. 4 point, or 1.41 divided by 0.71 gives me... 1.98, so I'm going to say that's 2. And then 2.8 divided by 0.71 is 3.9, so we're going to call that 4. So now these are my subscripts. So my answer will be Na2 S1 and then O4. So sodium sulfate is my answer, NaCuSO4. Let's look at the next one. Here we have a 10.150 sample of a compound, and it only has phosphorus and oxygen. If we know that 4.433 grams is phosphorus, find the empirical formula. So I'll go ahead and write our phosphorus amount is 4.433 grams. And then the rest, it says, is oxygen. So we're just going to take the 10.15 minus 4.433. So the rest, 5.717 grams, is oxygen. Now we need to get all of these in moles. So 1 over 16, and phosphorus's mass is 30.97. So 4.433 divided by 30.97 gives me 0.14. And then 5.717 divided by 16 gives me 0.36. The next step is divided by the smallest. So our smallest here is the 0.14. So that'll be 1. And then 0.36 divided by 0.14 is 2.57. We're going to call it 2.5. That's not a nice whole number. So what we have to do is if you get to this point where that should be your subscript, and you have a 0.5, you're going to multiply everything by 2 so we can get whole numbers. So this will be a 2 and this will be a 5. So my answer would be P205. Fortunately, your homework is only going to give you, as long as you're carrying your decimals out two places, Basically whole numbers, so you might get like 1.9 or 3.9, um, or numbers that are pretty much 0.5. If you get something like 2.7 or 2.3, then you may want to go back and check your calculations. Let's look at... Molecular formulas. Now, molecular formula is the actual 
formula for the compound. It's not the smallest ratio. So when we looked at sugar earlier, it was C6H12O6, but the empirical formula would have been CH2O. We want to know what's the actual formula, what that C6H12O6 would be. So you're going to have what's called an X factor, and that is going to be the empirical formula, what you would have um, multiplied your subscripts by in your empirical formula will give you your molecular formula. To get this, we're going to take the experimental mass divided by the mass of the empirical formula, and that's going to give us that X factor, factor or the relationship between those two. The problem will have to give you that experimental mass. The empirical mass you will have to calculate. So, for example, if they tell us that we're working with the empirical formula of HO and our X factor is 3, then we're going to multiply all of the subscripts by 3, so our molecular formula would be H3O3. So let's look at a couple. So here we're given our percents, so we're going to go ahead and start off just like we're doing an empirical formula problem. So you're going to do that whole thing, and then we're going to add a little bit on the end. So we've got carbon, which is 92.2, and again, we'll call that grams. And we've got hydrogen, which is 7.76 grams. And it says the sample has a mass of 39 grams. We're going to save that till later. So go ahead and we'll get everything in moles. So we'll do multiply by one mole over our mass, which is 12. So 92.2 divided by 12 gives me 7.68. And remember, two decimal places. Then we have 7.76, and hydrogen's mass is 1. So that's going to give me 7.76. So these are very, very close. So our smallest, 7.68 divided by 7.68. Basically, both of these are going to be 1's. So our empirical formula is CH. So all of this is what we've been doing. Now here's the next step. You need to find the mass of your empirical. So if we find the mass for this, carbon is 12 and hydrogen is 1. So that's a mass of 13 grams. Then we're going to come back here and the mass that they tell us in the problem, that's the mass of the molecular formula. So we're going to take the mass given in the problem, so 39, divide it by the mass of our empirical, and this is going to give us 3. This is our x value. So now we take that number and we multiply our subscripts from our empirical formula. So our molecular formula is C3. H3, and that's our answer.